to all of you as we gather for worship on this long weekend. Now, as we begin, we are going to turn to our announcements, and this is where you're going to realize there are changes. So, uh, the session met, uh, I guess now, what, two weeks ago? And we made the decision that after having the same order of service, I was pretty sure it's been about nine or ten years, that it was time to change it up. Um, you know, we did have changes during the pandemic, but it wasn't intentional changes. They were changes made sort of in the moment to meet the needs of, of what we were experiencing. And then we returned to what we were doing pre-pandemic, and so that's where we've moved towards something different. So, we will be patient with one another, because I'm sure there will be moments where we'll feel a little bit confused, and that's okay. Um, pay attention, there are asterisks to show where to stand, and some of them may be in different spots. Um, for example, you'll note here that we're not standing until the introit, so we're going to stay seated for the call to worship. Um, so we'll, we'll worship together, and wherever it leads us. <laughs> So our announcements are on page 5 and 6 of our bulletins, and I'll first share that the bulletins for May are dedicated to the glory of God and are in loving memory of the following people. Angus, Eva, sons Calvin and Arnold McLennan, Greta Grigg and Heath McLennan by Ruth and family, May Hardy by the family, Mary Howitt and Wendell Gillis by Wayne and Janice Trousdale, Isabel Hutchinson and Linda Lane by Helen and Elmer Hutchinson and family. Next week, we'll be worshiping together in Time Valley at 10 a.m. So this will be our first service back in Time Valley since Christmas and the Angel Tree service. So I know it'll be a delight to be back in that space. The service will also be available online. Um, it may not be online for seven because I will be away at regional council meetings next weekend from Friday, May 26th through until the Sunday. And so I will be uploading the service because Kevin is away, but I may not get it up as, I, as it usually is. So it, it may be later that evening or uh, the next morning, just depending on timing. But that does mean that, as I said, I will be away. Uh, I will keep uh, in touch through by checking my email and the voicemail at the manse at least once a day, in case anything comes up. Um, so you can reach out to me in those ways if there's any concerns. As well, thank you to Barb Burley and the session and all those who are assisting with the service next week to lead us in worship. So thank you to everyone for that. A reminder that we are continuing to collect items for the caring cupboard. Coming up on June the 4th is our Walk United fundraiser, so that's in two weeks. That will be following the service here. and. As well, that will be the closing service for our Sunday School and Busy Group. If you're wanting to participate in the walk itself, there's sponsor sheets available at the back of the church, and you can donate by sponsoring someone or contacting one of the stewards. Our graduation service will be the end of June, on June 25th, and that service will be here at Biddeford Conway. If you know of anyone graduating from high school or post-secondary program, please let me know. I do ask that you send this information to me, either give me a call or send it by email. Uh, Facebook Messenger works as well. The key is that it's given to me in a time and place where I can make sure I write it down somewhere safe so that I don't forget. Uh, I do ask that those names be submitted by no later than June the 11th. Our lunch social is happening again uh, this month on Wednesday of this week here in the meeting room. It'll start at noon hour. And so you're encouraged to come out and join us for soup, rolls, biscuits, dessert, and tea and coffee. Finally, a reminder that our offering plate will continue to be kept at the back of the church. And so don't, um, envelopes or uh, the power cards, those kinds of things, donations can be left in the plate before or after the service. Uh, just to note for any visitors, we will and we have them already there, some envelopes for anyone wanting to make a donation, um, they can do that by using the envelopes, and so you can share that with others. Those are the announcements I have. Are there any others? Is the regional meeting in Sackville? 
No, so uh, I'm not going that far. Uh, regional meetings are in Charlottetown this year. So I'll be headed to Charlottetown and Paul is going as well. Um, and so we'll be headed up on Friday and back Sunday. So now come, let us gather in the silence of this space. Let us listen for Christ is calling. Come, let us pray, for we are not alone.
us pray. You, O oh God, are with us always. You come to us in Christ to walk beside us. You come to us as the Spirit to gently guide us. You come at all times to comfort and love us. As we gather this day, be with us and unite us in Christ's name. And hear us as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading of scripture is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 1. And I'm actually going to begin with, chapter, with verse 1 through to verse 14. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning, until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after giving instruction through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and all Judea and Samaria, and, in the end, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they, were to, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, son of Alph Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. This is the word of the Lord. We'll now join in our hymn number 646, We Are Marching. Sing it twice. Yeah, we'll sing it through two times. <laughs>
Gospel of John, chapter 17, verses 1 to 11. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence, with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. <laughs> I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave to me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now we'll turn to our responsive reading, which is from Psalm 68 and is found on page 787 of Voices United. Acknowledge the power that is God's, 
whose majesty is over Israel, whose strength is in the skies. You are awesome, O God, and as you leave your sanctuary, bringing power and strength to your people. Blessed are you, God of Israel. Blessed are you.
which leaves us with that one word that Jesus said. Wait. Today is about waiting, which is what I'm going to invite you to do with me. I invite you to join with the disciples as they wait and wonder and as they seek to figure out what's next. Now, when we return to the story, I'm sure that they were still filled with a mix of emotions. We're not told much. We're told that they go on and do what Jesus has asked. But if you read through the story, you can tell that perhaps they were once again disheartened. They may have had an air of sadness because once again, Jesus was gone. They may have even had some disappointment, even though Christ had made some promises. Fresh off of the resurrection, they would have been overjoyed at having time with Jesus again. Some of them might have even returned to their original hope, and I've spoken about this before during the Holy Week and Easter season. The hope that Christ was going to restore Israel and free them from oppression and Roman rule. That Jesus was going to be the Messiah and the mighty warrior that they thought he would be. That finally things might change for the better. Yet here they were once again with new promises, yes, but Jesus gone. More hopeful note, because Jesus had promised that they would not be alone this time. And so that time of waiting was a little different than the days after the crucifixion. A little more hopeful, a little more positive. And this is what makes the story of Jesus' ascension still so powerful. First, the story reminds us that although Christ is physically gone, it doesn't mean that the disciples were left to their own devices. The same is true for us. But rather, Jesus leaves on his own terms with the intention of being with them and with us in a new way, new way. And I spoke about this a few weeks ago, that Christ continued to live on in them as they began the next phase of their mission and ministry, and that Christ now lives on in us. Through our words and through our actions, Christ is still alive. And all of this reminds us that we are never truly alone. The other key point from the Ascension is that it's about so much more than Christ leaving, even though it feels as though that's what it's about. In many ways, it's more of a beginning, because it's here that Jesus commissions his disciples for their ministry, where he tells them that they still have more to do. Yet, as I said, he asks them to wait and listen for the one he would send. In other words, he sends them out, but says first, stop, wait, listen. All with a purpose, all so that they might learn what it is they were to do next. Because it's clear, if you listen to the story, that they still haven't quite figured it out. As I mentioned, there was still that hopefulness when they asked of, is Jesus going to be the mighty warrior? One of them even says, Lord, is this the time when you'll restore the kingdom to Israel? They're drawing back on those images. And that's where he says, no, this is now your ministry. The time has come. They are to be part of that work. That they are the ones called to help restore God's kingdom. Which they're to do by following in his way by waiting for the one that would continue to inspire and empower them for that ministry, the Holy Spirit. Yet here we are still waiting. This is the message I want us to ponder. Waiting. How many of us like to wait? Do you guys like hanging out in the doctor's office for a few hours because the doctor's late? Or sitting on the phone trying to get a hold of somebody because you need to tell them that the phone's not working or your internet's not working and you're left on hold. I can't be the only one that finds that really difficult. We don't like to wait. It's not something we look forward to. And I'm sure that the disciples had a very similar thought. They were probably thinking, why in the world would we just sit and wait? You've told us that we should go out. 
Why not just give us the Holy Spirit now? You're right here. Give us all that we need. Let us get on with things. It's almost like picturing an impatient child waiting to be find out about a surprise that they've been promised is coming. And like the disciples, we can find ourselves feeling similar. Impatient to get on with things. Especially given that we live in a society that, prov that prides itself on speed. Getting things quick. Getting through the line fast. As I said, we often don't like waiting. If we go out to eat, we expect prompt service, speedy service, even at the expense sometimes of quality food. We get annoyed if we call someone and we don't get an answer right away, because in an age of technology where everybody has a cell phone, we think that we should get an answer right off, that everyone will be available. I find, especially with text messaging and Facebook Messenger, it's even more true. And in the church and our faith lives, we can see similar patterns. We pray and we want immediate answers. Worship can't be too long. We watch the clock because we need to move on to other things. I've been in churches where there's a clock on the wall. <laughs> we go to meetings and we focus on less conversation so that we can finish earlier. We become so caught up in the fast-paced life that we forget Christ's demand of his first church leaders to go and wait. Christ tells his disciples and us that as a faith community, sometimes we're being called on to slow down, to take time out and to wait and to listen, to truly feel the Spirit's presence in our lives and to hear what is being said to us and to the church. Because sometimes that is what is needed for things to become clear. Yet waiting is not easy, even when we know it's necessary, even when it's an important part of our faith. If we look at the disciples, they were still in deep grief after Christ's death and crucifixion, and they had to wait for the good news of the resurrection. It didn't happen the next morning. And once again, after the resurrection, they had to wait before setting out to begin their ministry as a new faith community. In both situations, waiting was painful, scary, confusing. And the same is true for us. It's not easy to slow down and wait, especially when we just want to fix things. But in the waiting and in the slowing down, we leave room for hope and inspiration. When we slow down and listen, it's then that we're inviting the Spirit into our lives, which then means that we can become more able to hear what the Spirit is saying, which can lead us to discover more about ourselves, about our faith, and about one another. Because although we are called to be agents of change, we're also called to wait and listen for God to guide us. For it's in the silence that we're more able to hear God's still, small voice that is whispering to us, encouraging us to where it is we need to be, which then opens us up to the movement of God in our lives through the presence of the Holy Spirit, just as the disciples did so long ago. As a Christian community, we're called to, called to follow in their ways, to follow the ways of the disciples and to be a community of action where we speak and move and live in the ways that responds to the Holy Spirit. Yet it all begins with pausing. Pausing in our daily lives to listen for the Spirit, to trust that wherever the Spirit leads us, we are not alone. Just as Jesus promised his disciples, he also promises this to us. And so the Holy Spirit continues to move in our lives this day to come to us and speak to us so that we might know that God is with us wherever it is we are on the journey. Whether we're in the depths of despair, whether we're feeling lost, confused, or uncertain of the future, or if we're in moments of joy and celebration. This is the gift of the, of the Spirit, the gift we celebrate next week. 
But today, again, I bring us back to waiting. And so as we wait for the Holy Spirit, as we wait once again for the Spirit to come, I encourage you to let this be a week of pausing. Make time to wait. Make time to stop and listen for the still small voice. Because when it comes, you will know. When it comes, it is then that you will then know that you are ready to go out and to respond to the Spirit. So pause, pray, embrace the silence, embrace the waiting time, as the disciples did so long ago, together in that room, men and women, Together, the new church that will soon be. Embrace the time, because soon enough there will be time for action. Like the rush of a wind, the time will come, as it did on Pentecost so long ago. So trust in this. Trust that we will find our way, that the direction will be visible to us when the time is right. And trust in Christ, the one who calls us into service today, tomorrow, and always. Amen. <clears throat> this is the moment of another point of change. We'll now come together in this time of confession as we reflect on the words of scripture that we have been pondering in God's message for us today. Let us pray. There are times, O oh God, when ministry is hard. We know Christ calls us into service, but sometimes we do not know how to live out our calling. And so we find ourselves looking up to heaven, focusing on Christ rather than his we forget that to love Christ is to serve one another. Forgive us, O oh God, and help us as we seek to turn our eyes toward us and the people you call us to serve. Amen. God's love reigns over us, refreshing and renewing us, so let us move forward together, knowing that in Christ we have been forgiven. Thanks be to God. Our next hymn is number 266, so we'll stand together and sing Amazing Grace.
to be seated. Let us pray. In the silence of the night, you hear us, O God. In the quiet sounds of a forest, you hear us. In the noise of the day, you hear us, O God. And for this, we give you thanks and praise. Yet we know, O oh God, that we too are called to listen. You call us to embrace the silence, this time spent with you. You call us to see you in the birds of the forest. You call us to hear your call, even when noise seems to be all around. And so we pray, O oh God, that you might guide us as we wait and listen. Guide us as we wait and listen to hear the voices of our neighbor, those who cry out in despair, those who live in fear, those who grieve, those who do not know where to turn. May we hear their call, and may we answer in your name. We pray this in all that we carry in our hearts this day, in the name of the one who called us into service, the resurrected Christ. Amen. I'll now share our minute for mission for this morning entitled, Rainbow Camp welcomes 2S LGBTQIA plus young people and allies. Rainbow Camp in Northern Ontario has welcomed young people of all sexual identities since 2012. From the beginning, Mission and Service has supported Welcome Friend Association, which runs the camp. Initially, we wanted to bridge the local, L bridge the local LGBTQ community with area churches. We started the association, and then we launched the camp. We had no idea what we were doing at the time. Only one person on the board had camp experience, but we knew that young people would benefit, said Chris Southern, one of the camp's co-founders. Originally a one-week camp with only 14 youth, Rainbow Camp now serves up to 50 youth each week for four weeks. Expansion plans are in the works. Rainbow Camp Atlantic is launching in August 2023 in Nova Scotia, and a pilot is planned for the West Coast. We've had an invitation to duplicate the Rainbow Camp experience in Australia and in the UK, too. It's, ex it's exciting, says Harry Stewart, also a co-founder. Above all, Rainbow, Rainbow Camp provides campers with a safe space to be who they are without judgment. I'll never forget our first year of camp. It was the second full day. A camper told us his mom had found a dress in his closet. He lied to her and said it belonged to his girlfriend. He had brought the dress to camp and said he would like to wear it. High heels and sand don't mix, Stuart explains, laughing. But the warmth, love, and compassion that the camper received from everyone at camp was amazing. We tell all of our staff, your job is to make sure that each and every camper has the best possible time at Rainbow Camp. Southern and Stuart want the camp experience to be memorable, fun, soul-searching, and supportive. We don't want any camper to feel afraid to be who they are. I think that's why so many now call it their home. This important work was recognized with the Governor General's Award in 2021, an award that recognizes great Canadians for exceptional deeds that bring honor to our country. Your generosity through mission and service supports safe, welcoming spaces like Rainbow Camp. So thank you. And now we pause to present our gifts as we keep in mind the many ways that what we offer makes a difference in the, in the lives of so many. And so now let us stand for our doxology as our offering is presented.
what we offer in Christ's name, that it may be used to share your love with the world. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 402, We Are One.